is a corrupted science. It was a beautiful science that we once had on this planet. And um, long time ago, let's, let's go back probably four to 5,000 years ago, the indigenous wisdom keepers of Egypt tell us that the age of Amun began, the age of darkness, the age of hiddenness. And um, <clears throat> that happened down here in good old Egypt. So, so we can go back, there were, there were seven world powers, okay? There were seven world powers. Um, and um, they're all basically the same entity, these seven world powers. Because what's a world power? What's an empire? It's a corporation. It's a corpse. You can't go and find... It. Where's the government, right? You, they've got buildings, but is that a government? No. They've got talking heads, they've got idiots that tell lies on the, on, on the Rothschild-controlled media all day long. Is that the government? No, they're just people who work for the government. What's the government? <laughs> you said it. It's a bit of paper, is it? I don't know. It's an invisible thing. It's, a, it's, it's the government. Right? And we're scared of it. And it's a corporation. Um, so that's what the... Rome is the current world power. Absolutely rules the world. How does it do it? Um, how does it do it? Well, it does it in, by stealth. <laughs> you don't know it's ruling. And, you know, most of your, your educated fathead disease types, they don't, they're preaching parrot fashion, repeating the rubbish that, uh, that they teach in their universities and institutions, all run by the Vatican. They wouldn't. People who come out of those institutions, they wouldn't know this. They laugh at you. Rome, still ruling. Oh, yeah. Well, um, check out the Senate when uh, the idiot Barack Obama is standing there and he's got his, the gold trim American flag behind him, the Catholic corporate flag, and eight-foot-tall fasci of Rome, one on his left, one on his right, and that's Rome telling you, hey, man, you know, we rule your ass. <laughs> And the Americans are, oh, we're a free country and Barack Obama is, is a democratic... Democracy's mob rule. Just check out what Thomas Jefferson had to say about it. It's mob rule. Where's the republics? You see, good old Rome is just the seventh incarnation of Assyria, Greece, Babylon, Medo-Persia and Egypt. They were world powers. Wasn't Egypt the light of the world? Oh, yes, it was. We're talking thousands of years ago. Now, Rome doesn't tell you that these, Egypt was around 60,000 years ago. You can't know that. And yet the indigenous wisdom keepers are telling you that. If you, if you come to this country and the Aborigines say, oh, we've been here for X amount, amount of years, and you say, oh, no, you haven't, uh, we're going to rewrite that 200 years or whatever, does that gel? Does that hold water? No, it doesn't. If the indigenous wisdom keepers tell you that they go back 65,000 years in this current consciousness wave, then what's Rome telling us that the pyramids and everything were built only 4,000 years ago? Check out the work of Robert Schock, Anthony, um, John Anthony West, Graham Hancock, Robert Bouval. Check out all those guys, what they know. Stephen Miller. I'm going to Egypt in October to talk... Uh, um, there to do some presentations with the Commission School of Ancient Mysticism. The flyers are at the front. And, um, and they are the indigenous wisdom keepers. So, <clears throat> but what happened four or five thousand years ago was a lot of corruption over here. The Amun priesthood, which has now morphed into the um, little country up here in the hills in the Alps called Switzerland. Schwesterland, the land of the sisters. Who would those sisters be, I wonder? Because Swiss, Swiss comes from Le uh, Sœur des uh, Sœur, I got that wrong, haven't I? <laughs> My French is not too good. <laughs> um, but uh, Les Sœurs, the sisters of Isis. Those banksters that got corrupt, the priesthood of Amon-Ra. And Akhenaten tried to change all that, Akhenaten, 3,500 years ago in the 18th dynasty. 
but the corruption was so heavy. These guys controlled the Suez Canal. Suez Canal. Zeus. Backward. Zeus backwards. Um, they controlled <coughs> the trading, the trading here. Then there was the Phoenicians over here. And check out the work of David Icke because he's spot on the money. Um, you know how he's gone around and he's discovered the Phoenician connection? You know that flag, the, uh, the flag that the British use? What's that one called? Yeah, well, anyway, the red, they've got the Union Jack, but they've got this flag too, yeah? Right? The Knight Temp Knights Templar flag and everything like that. That comes from Phoenicia, these guys, right here. These guys here were um, very um, into commerce. You see, when you go to court today, you're doing commerce. It's all about commerce. These guys, the Phoenicians, the word phony, you know, when someone's a phony, that comes from Phoenicia, because they are phonies. <laughs> and you get phonetics, language, because these were the alphabet people, right? They gave the alphabet, the current form of alphabet, from, went to Greece and then Rome, but it comes from Phoenicia, Tyre. This city was so dangerous that the, Assyri the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Greeks hated, everybody hated these people. They were killers. They used to do tin, tin trading with England. Thousands of years ago, 3,000 years ago. There's evidence that they went to the, to the Americas, these people. They were right. They controlled the whole Mediterranean. They set up Carthage. Rome destroyed Carthage because of these bastards. Sennacherib, a king of Assyria, and Esarhaddon, his son, and Ashurbanipal, 2,700 years ago, had a go at destroying Tyre. They had a, um, a city out in, in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, and, and there was a causeway that this, and all the boats came here. This was, they controlled the seas, commerce. This is where our commerce comes from. Then Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it after Sennacherib, Esarhaddon, and Ashurbanipal had a go. Then Alexander the Great dealt with them. We're talking big, big rulers that tried to get rid of these people because they were controlling everything. They controlled all of this, Sicily. The Greeks controlled this part. They controlled many, many cities. Eventually they came over here to Venice. And the Phoenicians are the Venetians. I hope I've spelt that right. Venetians, Phoenicians, these are the black nobility. When Rome was sacked, most of them went here. And where did they found Venice? On the water. Just like they did. Copycats, aren't they? Same people. Uh, and these guys, then they married into all the royal bloodlines, the blue bloods in Europe with their money because these are the gold bullion people, the commerce people. And these people founded the Jesuits. The Jesuits run the world. Scum of the earth, killers, murderers, blood guilty dogs, killing our children. They run people trafficking, drug trafficking, the lot of it. And Queen Elizabeth is one of them. She's a bloodthirsty evil entity. You've got no idea. And people go to see Prince William. Oh, Prince William. And they're crying and they're falling over. If only they knew that these people are killers. There's so much blood guilt that this, car this family um, carries that even the Bible says that the, the blood, the smell of the blood of the death of all of God's witnesses go up to his nose and the stench of the blood of these people. Blood, blood, blood. Rome founded Paris, Rome founded London, they are Roman corporations. El London, the city of the Lord, El, the sun, or Saturn. Paris, Swiss, Paris, for Isis. And what do you find in the centre of Paris? Well, you find the Notre Dame. Who's the Notre Dame? Well, that's Isis. They're telling you. I mean, you, it's not hard. Now, Rome's an interesting story because Rome 
when good old Babylon was destroyed, the priesthood, you know those cardinals, those guys dressed in red? Yeah, Babylon. That's why the whole thing's called Babylon the Great. Get out of her, my people, if you do not want to share with her in her sins. Because you will. And I'm, we're going to talk about the remedy to get out of Babylon the Great. It's a system of shit served up as freedom for you. Just get a birth certificate and join the corporation and get on the citizenship. What they've done is they put you on their ship and you think you've got rights because you're on the land. You've got no rights, which are creator-given. Let's not use the word God-given because we don't want to be churchy now <laughs> and killers because that's what they are and pedophiles. The creator. The creator. The cause. The Ein Sof. The Anama. The no-named one. If you name it, it's not them. It's not that one. You come from there, the cause. It's unconditioned consciousness. You are unconditioned consciousness. Blissful. Blissful. That's your true nature. So why are you suffering? Why are you sick? Because of this system. It's got to go and it will go. And we're going to bring it down with our consciousness and peaceful non-compliance, guys. Preach the word. Peaceful non-compliance. Don't comply with these bastards. The phonies. Um, they set up a good old system, all right? Yeah. They set up, set up a system where you, you don't have any rights anymore. Don't go to court saying, I have rights and God-given rights. Don't do that because you haven't. You've got services, privileges and benefits. And you might want to check Black's Law Dictionary to find out what that means. It means you're a freaking slave. <laughs> Privileges. Yeah, you can go to jail. That's a privilege. You can pay tax. That's a benefit. Benefits them. It's all rigged and stacked in their favour. You can't win in court. There's no remedy. It's a slave ship. How did they get us enslaved? Well, I wonder. Hmm... Well, when a child is born, it comes through a birth canal, doesn't it? So when the ship comes in the high waters from another land, which has different laws, and cannot trade with another country unless it has maritime law, it comes into the birthing canal, B-E-R-T-H, yeah? Right? Birth birth, same stuff, canal, birth, the docks. There's always a doctor when a child is born, isn't there? That's the docks, yeah? Um, a certificate of manifest. Oh, here's a baby, a statement, of live, a statement of live birth. And they got your parents to inform. It says it on your birth certificate, the informants. This is it, this is my slave. Bond, bonded, certified, it's certified because it was a statement of birth, live birth. And what the, the government did was it says, oh, yes, beautiful. We've got two, Palmina Bonacci and Vittoria Bonacci have just um, uh, informed that they've got a, something has manifested into the world. That's the certificate of manifest that the captain gives when he comes into the docks, into the port, in the canal, the birth canal. And he gives the port authorities this docket. A, a warehouse docket. And that's what this is, guys. That's your birth certificate. It's certified. Why would they have to certify it? Remember that word, because in the second half, you'll realise how important that word is. Because that's how they got the wool over you, because their documents are certified. And we go to court. Do you certify your documents when you go to court? There you go. That's how they do it. So, so then they certify it, the government, and then, and then puts, it in, puts it on bond paper. Bond? Bondsman? Slave? Yeah. And then gives you a certified copy. And you run off and go, oh, look at this. Oh, I've got a birth certificate. Oh, I'm a citizen. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're a citizen, all right. On their ship. It's a ship. And 
the, the waters they've put all around the planet with their little pyramids around the world. And you see the little watermark two foot, two foot off the ground, that little bronze, that little strip, that little mark that goes around. That's the, um, that's the water. They've brought the water up to there, wherever you see these pyramids, and they rule. Washington, D.C. has got that Washington Monument, 666 foot of, of granite monument. Rome has the largest natural obelisk in the middle of St. Peter's Square, stolen off Cairo by Julius Caesar, because the Julian dynasty is the family that started these corporations. Because he and his son, adopted son Augustus, were the first gods, sons of God, to rule an empire. And the Republic went bye-byes. Just like uh, the Vatican did 130 years ago in America, in 1881, on, on the 21st of February, the 1881 Act. It's an act. They're acting. The US is a corporation, not the United States of America, the Republic. And the churchgoers have been indoctrinated to think that it's a Christian country. No, the Christians were killing the indigenous people, converting them to Christ by the edge of the sword, putting them into concentration camps. They call, what do they call them, reservations? The Indians are in reservations. Look at our Aborigines. You reckon they have suicide in, in our jails? No, mate. No, no, they're poisoned. They're killed. They're murdered by the policemen. Because half of the police force, if not 90%, are animals. Unconscious animals. Bullies. Bullies that have no place doing what they're doing. It's all criminal, all of it. There's nothing redeemable in it at all. Nothing. Consciousness must come to save this planet. Consciousness. Not intelligent stuff. In the institutions, they keep you below the solar plexus. The solar plexus is the fourth brain. We have four brains. The cerebrum, the cerebellum, the medulla oblongata, which controls all of our involuntary actions like breathing, etc., and the solar plexus. This is the lower mind. People are stuck in the lower mind and they can't get out of it because all of the practices in the institutions of the world, education, church, the lot of it, keep you down there. They don't, they're not inter interested in enlightenment, but they're very interested in the word education for some reason. We need to educate the kids. And you've got types like Bill Gates who's, we've got to vaccinate those poor children. In other words, kill them. It's eugenics. They're killers. They're all killers. And he belongs, like all the rest, all the rest of these multi-billion trillionaires, trillionaires, what have you got? They've got trillion pieces of paper scum of the earth, they're all into eugenics. Prince Philip, oh, if I could come back, I would be a virus and kill 90% of humanity. Yeah, Prince Philip. Oh, yeah, when, when Prince William goes around poncing around, so important, and all these kids go <coughs> to their, um, their murderers to um, praise them and honour them. You see... The whole process is a satanic evil ritual. And it all comes from these, these creeps. You see these, um, the tiara, the trirenium. Trirenium, Three kingdoms would be over your physical bodies and your souls and your spirits. The Catholics, the universal church, tell you that salus extra ecclesia non est. In other words, you can't be saved outside of the Catholic church. So they take it upon themselves to baptise you. And there's your baptism. You're a citizen of Rome and you're owned lock, stock and barrel, and you're a slave of Rome. Citizen means slave or employee. You work for Rome. And you love that. Oh, I'm, I'm going into court and I'm going to defend my name there, see? 
Santo Bonacci. Wow, all caps. I wonder what that means. Fiction, cooperation, everything's on paper. When they send you a summons, a bit of paper, you get scared and you go, oh, they're, they're, they're demanding I go to court. They're just inviting you to go to court. And you can decline as you will, as you wish. But people are going into court not knowing anything about this and they're being raped by this empire. Now, <clears throat> please check out this product. This is brought out by Amen Stop Productions. Amen Stop. Yeah, they're going to stop the sisters of ISIS, the Amon Ra people that used to control all the, the Suez Canal. And it, by the way, that was Zion, Mount Zion. That's why these Zionists want to control the world because they come, from, they come from this very, very ancient, dark, dark brotherhood. Check out William Bramley's work, The Gods of Eden. Read that book. And that'll open your eyes. Please, if you can get a chance to watch Esoteric Agenda. Money as Debt. The Money Masters. I have originals of all of the... I've got a ton of DVDs. Because uh, I, uh, I don't rip them off the internet. I buy the originals. Masters of the Universe. Hijacking Humanity. Great products, guys. Check out the work of Tony Bushby. Tony Bushby has busted the... He's an Australian author, by the way. He's got about six books. I've read them all. And they're all brilliant. I got this picture from his book. Well, looky here. That's a whole bunch of boats, isn't it? That was 600, 500 years ago. Uh, <clears throat> this is the Vatican's army, by the way, 500 years ago. This was a crusade. These ships were all parked in the Bay of Naples. And this famous painter, he just grabbed the occasion and just, and just did that for us and left that for antiquity. That's only half of the naval... Look at those ships... What's a church doing with all those war machines, ships? Well, as that DVD shows, the Ring of Power, Rome, the city of London, this city of London, the commercial hub where the Phoenicians, the phonies went with their commerce laws, and DC are the three cities of the Ring of Power. Check it out. Whatever you do, check it out. Uh, the painter was a um, famous painting by Giorgio Vasari, Italian artist and historian. Travelled to Messina. Oh, it was in Messina, sorry. Mm. Uh, in Sicily, down here. Not the Bay of Naples. Uh, Messina and painted this picture on site. It reveals approximately 200 moored Christian ships that had returned to port shortly after Pope Pius V died, uh, uh, sorry, organised the last crusade against the Turks in 1571. That's morphed, that's morphed into the Pentagon, guys. It hasn't gone away. They're still killing people in Libya, Afghanistan and, and everywhere where they need to bring democracy because it's, it's really good to have democracy to be able to export it to countries that don't have it because it's corporate thuggery, Halliburton and Blackwater doing business with foreign countries. They've been doing it since... Oh, I wonder who the, uh, the family was that uh, <coughs> discovered the Americas and took it off the originals. Not the aboriginals, the originals that were there. Yeah, that's... That's how it was painted, Constantine coming with what, a, a cross? Yeah, maritime flags, crosses, Catholic church written all over it. In fact, the year, the year after 1492 when he went back to Portugal, he signed the, um, the Treaty of Tordesillas. Look into that because that gave the Vatican all the land. And you know what they did? They had a demarcation line where they went straight through South America and they gave the Portuguese... They gave the port. That's why Brazil, all the all the um, west 
the eastern part of South America is Portuguese speaking. And there's a line that goes straight through. And everything west is Spanish. Because the, they settled that. Columbus settled that. <laughs> that's why you have the, the bank of international settlements. We're all on a settlement. It's plantation. They went and grabbed the plantation, took a bunch of black slaves over there to grow the cotton and everything like that. And that's how they started this company. There were 13 companies, in fact, which morphed into 13 colonies, which morphed into 13 original states. States, that would be the Vatican. The Papal Billions, no, no, big mistake with that title. It's the Papal Gazillions. And they've raped it. They have raped the planet and they've trashed it. The Bible fraud, ooh. I wonder what he's got to say about that. And uh, I love Joseph Farrell. He's written a bunch of books and they're one better than the other. And this one, there's a chapter in there about the four, the M-O-N words. Mon, you know, uh, monarchy, monotheism, money, monopoly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... What they've done is they've given you a name and it's all caps. It's called uh, Capita Diminutia Maximus. I hope I got that right. But anyway, I, I, I sometimes get it right and then sometimes just can't get it at all. <laughs> uh, but um, anyway, uh, all caps. So what's with the name? Well... <sighs> Why does a police officer... By the way, that's a, that's a sheriff. <laughs> that's a sheriff in New South Wales, man. They're telling you, we work for the Catholic Church. They're telling you, man, and they come to your door. Oh, by the way, I, I neglected to uh, mention there was a country here called Kazaria. And the Kazarians are also in, in with this mob. So you have to understand where all of the corrupt entities came from and how money families merged with monarchy, blue blood families and now you have the bourgeoisie, not the aristocracy, running the planet. In other words, the unconscious. Once upon a time it was a meritocracy in a republic and if you had the merits, you got the job. These days, George Bush gives himself the job. A known criminal, criminal family like you wouldn't believe. Killers, murderers. Prescott Bush was doing trade with the Japanese during World War II, selling them scrap metal and oil. He got busted. They took him to court. Didn't lose. <laughs> you don't when you know the judges, man, you know. No worries, Mr Judgy Poos. They're all criminals. Um, <clears throat> but these families, they elect themselves the elite, the elites, they're not the aristocracy. They are the bourgeoisie scum. And in the Bible they're called the Gentiles. And the Gentile times of the nations have been a good few thousand years. And why? Well, because we live in cycles. And this is what the churches don't want you to know. We live in one cycle, is a 24,000 year cycle called procession. And what happens is we go in the summer and the winter of procession, just like any other season, day and night. As, we go, as the sun goes around through the 12 signs of the zodiac, it brings us through new ages. It spends 2,000 years in the sign. It's been in the sign of Pisces for 2,000 years and it's entering the age of Aquarius, which will bring change, spiritual change, great spiritual change and consciousness. And we're receiving the benefit of that now. We're going through the dragon's breath Every time Aquarius comes, Aquarius is the man. There's only one man standing there. Okay, Gemini is a couple of twins. There's Virgo, she's a woman. The rest is animals and all sorts of creatures. But there's one man, Aquarius, he's got the, the water. And he's pouring it down. Those are spiritual waters because Aquarius is a fixed air sign and air is mind. You see, Pisces, the two fish, one doubts and one believes. We've been in the church of doubting and believing for 2,000 years. Oh, believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. Oh, I doubt. Don't doubt, brother. Believe, doubt, believe, doubt. 
Aquarius, the motto of Aquarius is I know. Hey, that's why we're knowing. We're knowing all this now and waking up. It's the age of consciousness. And it will defeat this beast. We will defeat it. We had a crack, like I said, um, 500 years ago in the Renaissance. You see, Martin Luther, they reckon that he was this great uh, liberator. He was just another businessman doing a different business called Protestantism. And they're all the same shit. You think any of those Protestant churches actually tell their little dupes that go to church, hey, you know what, you've got this trust that the Catholic has and it owns your soul and everything like that. And you know when you pay all the bills with your, with your you know, all the hard-earned money that you give as tax to the government, to the priests of Baal, do you think the churches... Go to any one of these churches, do you think any of those priests are telling them, hey, wake up! The Vatican owns your asses and you're paying everything to the Vatican through the trusts. You're, yeah, you reckon you're going to get that in church? The Jehovah's Witnesses never said that when I was there for 22 years, knocking on your door, helping you to find Jesus because he's lost. 30 years before Martin Luther, <laughs> the scum, there was a real decent liberator, Giovanni Pico della Mirandola. And he, and he had 900 theses. And this book is called Syncretism in the, Syncretism in the West. What's syncretism? That's the stuff I'm doing. Astrotheology, everything. All of the philosophies, all of the religions, all of the sciences, they're all one. <laughs> they're all interrelated. They're all one. These guys like to tell you they're not. And they specialise people with a PhD and, you know, doctors and all of these, dentists, and, and they only specialise in one thing and they know squat about everything else. <laughs> so they're perfect foot soldiers for Rome. Policemen are doing their job because they think they're doing something good. For, they're working for Rome. Everyone has been conscripted. They've all been conscripted. And we have too unbeknownst to us through this system which I'm going to expose and the churches don't. He wrote a beautiful book called The Oration of the Dignity of Man. If you ever want to read a great philosophical work, this is like the, um, this is like the manifesto of philosophy. Giov Pico, he went down to Rome with 900 theses 30 years before Martin Luther and he challenged the, what he called the Apostolic Senate the buffoons in red, the cardinals, he called them the apostolic senate. Yeah, this, the Vatican is just the Roman senate. That's all it is. It's been morphing all the time. And he challenged them and he said, come on, I'll take you on, you idiots, and I'll show you that Plato, Hermes, Aristotle, Buddha, Krishna, Virakosha, all said the same thing and it was all just natural science. And these guys have come along and they've made a fictional story out of it, herding people into churches, telling them, oh, you'll be saved by Jesus Christ. The vicarious salvation. What, you can't save yourself? If you're dumb, you can't. But if you're enlightened, yes, you can. The Christ is within. In fact, Colossians 1, 27, 26 and 27, where the Apostle Paul says, the sacred secret from all times that was hidden from your eyes is now being revealed to you. And that is the glory of the Christ within. What was he talking about? Well, he's talking about there's a sacred fluid that is produced in your cerebrum, in the pia mater portion, the holy portion of the brain, right? At the claustrum, otherwise known as the holy claustrum or Santa Claus. And it goes down into the midbrain. It hits the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. It gets differentiated there. The pineal sends an electric portion of that fluid down the pingala. And then the pituitary gland sends a magnetic portion down the pingala. It goes down to the sacrum here in the spine. And you have an, an, a nerve ending called the sacrum. Let's not use the word chakras because that's from the devil. Let's call them nerve endings or ganglion. And you'll find that in Gray's Anatomy. And I don't know whether Gray worshipped the devil or Sante or all those anatomists. Uh, so uh, let's not disturb the Christians, shall we? 
Um, <coughs> that oil, otherwise known as Christos, the Christ within, goes down your spine after it's differentiated at these two glands, travels down the tree of life, which is the pneumogastric nervous system, feeding the lungs and the stomach, the tree of life, and then above that ganglion, there's the solar plexus. Remember that one, the fourth brain? That's called Bethlehem. Corresponds with Virgo in the zodiac. Virgo is, Bethlehem means the house of bread because there is a seed born there which is the bread, the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. It's not talking about a historical person, it's talking about this inner science of how if you raise that oil and return it back to God by tithing, by giving 10% of it back. Because if you squander that oil in riotous living, like overeating and drinking and lots of stuff, you ruin it, you spoil it. It never goes up. The reason it must go up to touch the optic thalamus, this little egg, little egg that sits on top of the spine. And this is why the, the, Rome, the Pontifex Maximus has got his staff and it's got a... a, a a pineal gland or a, you know, uh, a, con, uh, a, um, a pine cone on, on the end of it because it's talking about the pineal gland at the top, right behind the optic thalamus. When the oil reaches there, that is when you, you get Christed. That's the crucifixion. And what happens is that oil vibrates a thousand times more than when it was down here. And guess what? It reactivates all the dormant brain cells in your brain. And you've got trillions of them. Alcohol kills brain cells. It's a killer. That's why they love alcohol and they tax it and everything like that. And they tell you, you know, <laughs> that marijuana is bad. Cannabis, they call it marijuana because that's a legal term and they can herd you into court and send you to jail for it. But cannabis, they can't. Cannabis is the God plant. It's alkaline but they'll give you plenty of alcohol because that's poison and it'll kill that seed. You kill that seed and you get 12 opportunities to raise that seed because every month when the moon is in your sun sign, a psychophysical germ is planted in Bethlehem. There's a little indentation in that solar ganglion and that's where the seed is born. And you have an opportunity when the moon is passing through your sun sign, in my case Aries, to abstain from sex and save that seed and it'll go up and you'll be Christed, illuminated. Syncretism is what this is all about tonight, guys. Whether it's going over your head a little bit or not, or whether you're right up to scratch with me and you're right up, that's good. I'm hoping you are. It looks like you are. I can tell you guys are keeping up. But... Your churchgoers and all these people who watch this video once it's on the internet, uh, they would have turned it off about the 10th minute in. Oh, this is from the devil. Off and then just, I don't want to stay, hang on to my opinions. Lose the opinions and learn and know the truth. Knowing in the Kabbalah there is a Sephiroth that's called Dart. Here, it's the doorway. It's the 11th Sephiroth. On the top is Kether, Ether. That's where you've got to reach. You've got to bring the Christ back up. Raise the Christ, like a thermometer. It's like a lamp. It's a thermometer. It's just like a distillery. The, the bad stuff stays down, the good stuff goes up. Vibrates higher. And that's what you've got to do. And when you get to Kitha, you've got Chokmah and Binah, and here you've got Dat, knowledge. That's the key. That's why they don't want knowledge, and they kill the knowers. Giordano Bruno was a knower. He knew this science. I got rid of him on the 17th of February, 1600, after seven years of torture. Just like this bastard killed uh, Jacques de Molay, uh, the Clement, the one after him, in cahoots with uh, Philip of France, and they stole all the Templars' money. But see, in 1291, just months after Akon fell to the Templars in the Middle East, you know, those uh, crusades, just months after they went to Switzerland and founded Switzerland, the, uh, the Sisters of Isis, these bankster types. And uh, he killed Jacques de Molay in 1307, just five years, uh, sorry, Clement after him, 
just five years after um, he enacted a papal bull called Unum Sanctum. This is where most of the trouble began because all of this stuff that, I, that I've presented here, it's all been absorbed by the Catholic Church. They made a claim in 1302 in Unum Sanctum, written with blood on the skin of a kid. Do your homework about kid. We call our children kids. On the skin of a kid, and then they put it in their vaults, they curse it with their black magic, their Saturnian black magic, satanic black magic, and then, guess what? There's no one around to challenge that claim. Anyone here know of anyone that's challenged? No, it hasn't been challenged. So Boniface the Eighth, do-gooder, because that's what Boni Boniface means, Boniface, it's like my name, Bonacci, it means to do good, Bon. Hmm, yeah, he did good. What he did was he set up this... And subsequent to this papal bull, which says basically, you can check it out on Wikipedia, uh, Unum Sanctum, the um, papal bull, okay? Check it out on Wikipedia. Um, it tells you that the Catholic Church basically put on that with blood, that they own the world, all the chattel, all the souls, all the titles of properties and everything, and that's that. And that's how they've been doing business with their Jesuit army ever since. And they turn up in court when you go to court and you think you're getting justice. You think you're on the land. And these poor boys, 18, 17, 18, 19, got caught with a bit of cannabis. Didn't hurt anybody. They didn't break the universal law, do no harm. They're just taking God's plants. Or perhaps got a few speeding fines. You know, five k's over the limit here, five miles over the limit there. And guess what? And the judge, if he's having a bad day, says, uh, two months jail. You know, some of those boys never come out the same. They're depressed forever. Some of them commit suicide. And the judge has got plenty of cash in the back pocket. They make a lot of money out of jail. Get people into jails. Get, build more jails. Build more jails. Get people into jails. Fill them. Because they make gazillions. It's a business. It's all corporate. It's a corporate monstrosity. And remember the word corpse. That's all it is. This is not a republic or anything like that or a constitution. You have no rights. Services, benefits and privileges is all you've got on this ship. But remedies are coming. Okay? Um, after this um, fateful day, and you know when you have fateful days when... You make a decision in your life and, and cons the consequences of that decision are just so awful. Oh, it's so awful. You've, you've had that. I know you have. <laughs> no one's immune from it. But that was a fateful, fateful year, 1302, because after that, in 1455, they created the first... Um, well, no, Unum Sanctum was the first expressed trust in history claiming the world... Uh, but in 1455, Romanus Pontifex, a trust, a Sestui KV trust, was created. And that channeled all of the property from Unum Sanctum into it. And what does it do? According to the research of Franco Collins, another researcher in Australia, because that's all I am, by the way, I'm just a researcher. I don't get anybody teaching me anything. I don't channel information, I don't have visions, I don't have any of that esoteric stuff, I'm not condemning any of that because there's people out there who are channeling and having visions and whatever, that's how they get their information, great. I sweat for it. <laughs> and it's, this is the result of just hard researched stuff, well researched stuff. And if you've seen my videos on astrotheology, you will know that you can't debunk it. There's an idiot out on the internet who's offered $30,000 to anyone who can debunk Zeitgeist, the film. The first film of Zeitgeist was brilliant, right on the money. And it opened the minds of many, many people and they woke up. My videos probably got about 100 times more evidences and proofs of the same thing, that the churches are based on a true science and they've corrupted it, turned it into shit and given it as truth. 
And that idiot owes me $30,000. I'm declaring to the world today that the buffoon who made... <laughs> you go to Zeitgeist on the internet, Google Zeitgeist, and then just under that is Zeitgeist debunked. You want to vomit? Check it out. I vomited when this creep, this churchy boy, Jesus is going to save us, is, is debunking Zeitgeist. Go to hell. I've debunked that idiot a thousand times and he owes me $30,000. That's on the record. Um, and uh, so, so another researcher went back and debunked the debunker of Zeitgeist. Kicked his butt. Check out, the, um, check out all the, the proofs like I've done in my videos. They're full of proof. That's all it is. That's all it is. I've just done this proof there. Proof that astrotheology is the system that runs it all. And these corporations and the Khazarians, remember what they did, man. These, um, there, was, there was Christendom over here and there was Islam over here. And then this one, they adopted the Jew, Judaism and corrupted it. Just like these corrupted Sufi wisdom. And, and these ones corrupted and destroyed Gnostic Christianity, the true sciences. Sufism is science. Judaism is science. Kabbalah, it's beautiful spiritual science. It's all dealing with the same thing, different languages. That's why when idiots say to me, oh, do you believe in astrology, Santos? I say, nope. I know astrology, just like I know English. I don't believe in it. I know how to play a guitar. I don't go, oh, shit, I'm going to the mall today. I'm, I better believe in my guitar and believe that I can play the guitar. Yeah. Believing is for fools. Remember the two fish of Pisces, right? Oh, astrology. It's from the devil. And the PhD, the fat head types, tell you that it's... Um, a pseudoscience because we, we did it in the laboratory and it's, there's no proof that it works. So let's stop thinking about it. Told me the great astrology said, idiots who condemn astrology are buffoons because they can't understand anything. And because they haven't got the, the insight and the intuition and they haven't got the, the reactivated dormant brain cells going and the higher mind activated and they're down here in the animal mind, they can't understand squat and then they condemn it. Einstein said, investigation, uh, um, condemnation without investigation is the height of stupidity. And so these idiots, do you believe in astrology, Santos? No, I, uh, I know it. A and um, why? Oh, it's from the devil. And how much do you know about astrology? Oh, nothing, but it's from the devil. I know that because some pedophile priest told me that when I was a little boy in church. The same one that raped me. <laughs> Yeah, in uh, 1481, ah, astrology. Uh, last time I checked, that means stars, and last time I checked, God made the stars, not the devil. And logi is the science of the stars. That is an innocent term. That is an innocent word. I'll tell you what isn't innocent. See, the Bible condemns astrology. It doesn't condemn astrology. It appears to be a condemnation. You must not have astrologers in the land. Just like you shouldn't have doctors in the land. If there's doctors, it means you're sick and you're eating shit. Because if you eat raw food that the earth produces, you'll never get sick. And you walk on dirt and you solar gaze and you do all those things. You never get sick. And you raise the Christ, you can live forever. If you do that properly, raising that oil, you can live forever. In fact, they used to. And they, when they decided they had enough of incarnation, they just said, oh, I've had enough of this, I'm out of here. But now we're just dying at 60, at 30, at 40, cancer, heart disease and everything like that. Astrology can cure it. Paracelsus, a great man who discovered hydrogen and, and nitrogen and zinc in the 1500s, they called him the Swiss Hermes. He was a great astrologer. The Bible condemns astrology, does it? I'll tell you what it does, it's condemned. And um, I wonder how many churchgoers, you know, they see an astrologer and uh, she's from the devil. But uh, let me tell you what else the Bible condemns. <coughs> Liars. Uh, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. I wonder how many people go to get their documents notarized and justice of the peace and all those people that make those papers that put you into prison 
and you know when a churchgoer is in a bit of legal strife, his brother says, "Oh, you need a lawyer, brother." <laughs> no, this one's from the devil. Oh, that's the de- lawyers. Ah, oh, ooh, money. A lot of them have got their pockets full of that usury. I wonder what that means. The Bible says you must not practice usury. Never charge interest to your brother. Never. It's a sin. These boys up here, they know all about usury. Just go and check out their homes. 16 storey gold, the gold that they've pillaged from around the earth. They've got ivory in their homes. They've got diamonds and silver and gold and jewellery everywhere. And Rolls Royces poncing around, destroying, trashing the earth. Usury. Oh, um, governments. Uh, Pharisees. That would be the priests. That's the churchgoers. They use the services of the priests. Uh, Astrologers are from the devil, though. Um, see, you can make money out of this. This is, this is part of the capitalistic empire of destruction and death that the churches are 100% in cahoots with. That's why they hmm, use lawyers and scribes and got money in their pockets and go to the bank for a mortgage, a death pledge. Oh, yes. 30 years of debt to the banks. Yep, mortgage. Give me a mortgage. Give me one of those. Hey, where do I sign? Mortgage. Beautiful. And the Bible condemns usury. And they're right in there getting a lot of it. Banks, you got some money? I'll have some of that. Yeah, oh, 20% interest? Doesn't matter. Bible condemns that. Yeah, give me some of that. And you've got all these Christians who've got loads of cash. And they love the birth certificate because God, um, God keeps the governments, he's, allows them to rule. Because God's got a controversy with this other fictional corporation called Satan. This bad guy. Uh, look, I'm just going to... Ten more minutes. It's, it'll, it's uh, what is it, half past eight? Yeah, instead of quarter to nine, I think we, um, I can see a little bit of tiredness. So, ten more minutes. Hang in there. Okay? Boring? No. Nah. Okay. Um, so, in 1481, just 12 years before 1492, when the Christopher Columbus family, fiction, discovered America and raped it, consequently... Uh, and killed a few uh, 300 million indigenous people. That's the true figure. Don't listen. Don't think the cowboys and Indians and the, ki- the Indians were baddies and they, you know, killed a couple of thousand and you know did them a favour and stuck them on reservations. <laughs> no, no, no. They went there to do business. The elite families, the elite families went there. They saw those lands in America. They saw Australia, the Crown, the Holy See, and the Commonwealth, and they said, duh. Let's bring Christendom out there because there's a whole bunch of baddies, people, Aboriginals in Australia. Oh, they've got a bad religion. They, they, think, they think everything's got souls in it. I mean, they think trees have got souls in it. Animists, pantheists, theist is the word. You see, they, use, they love the word theist because it's God, it's male. They don't like the word deist. The founding fathers of America were deists. The divine. They knew that they were divine and that we are divine. We're nothing but divinity. Nothing less than divinity. You're not the sinner that they tell you are in church. You're not the worm. You're not the grub, the groveller. Beg for a registration. Yeah. Sign up here, sign up there. There's a salesman on every corner. You're driving down the highway just about to have a crash because there's you know, this sexy woman selling shit. Uh, there's someone else selling more shit. And everybody's going, oh, I better get the, the new SUV. Got to keep up with the Joneses while he's climbing the corporate ladder, which doesn't exist, leaving their little children at home with pedophiles to look after them in many cases, down at the local, you know, child-minding centre, child-minding centre. So they created in 1481 Attorney Regis, the Eternal Crown. The one before that in 1455, Romanus, Romanus Pontifex, that's the crown. The crown, you think is English, it's, it's the Vatican. The crown, the commonwealth, 
The second one is the Commonwealth. Attorney Regis is the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is not the English Empire. It, Rome owns it. Rome owns the lot. The Vatican does. What the big thing is we need to know is who are the families that own that corporation? Who are they? I would suggest it might be the Pizzo family. The Rothschild family would be in there. Kazarian scum of the earth with their wonderful grandmother who said if my sons didn't want wars there wouldn't be any. <laughs> I'd like to know where, if there's a burning place in hell, I'd like to know where her address in hell is because she'd be burned right now. There's no way you can, you can wipe the slate clean after you've said something like that and lived and backed it up and been proud of it and boasted it. In 1537, the Jesuits, the Phoenicians, the black nobility who married into all these, you know, the House of Orange, the House of Hanover, the House of Hess and, and the Saxico, the Gothas and all these, oh, let's go and see the prince. He's the prince of us. We, we need a monarchy. You know, we need someone to rule it because we're so dumb. <laughs> We need Prince William to tell us what to do to kill us. In 1537, convocation. So, Romanus Pontifex, Attorney Regis and convocation. They, they are the three trusts that have enslaved you. So after we have a break, we're going to see how they've done that. How they've corporatized your flesh blood entity and made you believe that you are your bodies. You ain't your bodies. This is just a part of who you are. A very, very small, small, lowest part of who you really are. And we need to remember who we are through meditation, through, through good practices, through consciousness and enlightenment, bringing up the oil, not living so riotously. There's, you know... There's a lot of temptation, there's a lot of allurements and entanglements that this world, this system offers. And in the end, it's poison. For all the people who have got shares with Halliburton and, and Blackwater because they make trillions of dollars, they're supporting the um, in military industrial complex. So your citizenship makes you a killer. And you go to work and pay tax, makes you a killer because you're supporting this system. Non-compliance is the way to go. It's absolutely peaceful, non-compliance is the way. Get out of it. Teach the pensioners that they don't need to pay utilities. And if the uh, utility company rings and says, um, you've got an amount that you need to pay. Really? Well, so far, buddy, you've just sent me statements. You send me a true bill, mother effer, and I might pay that. I might pay that if you send me a true bill. You watch and see if they send you a true bill. They can't because there is none because they've already dipped into your Sestwi KV trust. They second dip all the time when you pay fines, when you pay parking tickets. They've already dipped into your, your Sestwi KV trusts. The banksters, they create money out of thin air with your signature. Why? Because the money's in your trust. How much would these banksters be making out of the seven million dollars they pay for this. When I was born 49 years ago on March the 24th 1963 and then subsequently a few days later this was certified, this bit of paper, the banksters paid in our, ter in our figures today seven to eight million dollars. Guess how much they made on that, what the return is which you get nothing of. When you go to the dole to get the dole because you haven't got a job for two weeks, can I get the dole please? 400, 400 little bits of pitiful money and they make you jump this hurdle and run around this, do all sorts of things. You've got to get this paper, that paper. We need to know who you are. 500% of ID. Oh, we can't just give you money. The banksters make $1.2 billion from your butts sitting on those chairs. $1.2 billion. These guys are living it up. Party's over. Mene, mene, tekel, parson. When Belshazzar saw the writing on the wall, mene, mene, tekel, parson. Your kingdom has been weighed in the scales. You have been found wanting. You're dead. These guys hang in there because they're dead. They're goners. Consciousness. It's going to send them bye-byes. Remember David and Goliath? Yeah. That's coming, okay? Let's have a break.
Thank you.